Welcome to 10 minutes of BBTV News brought to you by Bingvit Radio, Television Station and Newspaper. I'm the one with the latest news update and here are the headlines as usual. Republic of Korea, the second largest foreign investor in Bingfu. Bingfu kicks off 2023 lifelong learning response week. A plenum of 13 party central committee opens. Vietnam posts trade surplus of 21.7 billion US dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, the friendly relations and cooperation between Bingfu province and partner from the Republic of Korea have been continually strengthened over recent years. The two maintain a friendly relationship and regularly explore each other's potential and strengths in order to further boost cooperation and development. Korean businesses are currently investing in 84 projects in Bingfu, including in four joint ventures, with total capital of more than 735 million US dollars. Figures show that Bingfu's industrial parks were selected as the investment destination of 68 Korean investors, with total capital of more than 705 million US dollars. These investors are mainly small and medium-sized enterprises focusing on raw material production, accessories, footwear, and garment and textiles. Some 283 Korean experts and staff are also working in the province industrial parks. Being football's great potential and many strengths relating to its geographical location and land fund, the province is also carrying out effective and practical support measures for foreign enterprises, including those from the Republic of Korea. It has also strengthened its investment promotion efforts with these partners. The Department of Education and Training of Bingfu Province recently kicked off the 2023 Lifelong Learning Response Week at the Dongsoi High School in Dongsoi City. With the theme Building Self-Study Capacity in the Digital Era, this year's Learning Response Week takes place from October 2nd to October 8th and is aimed at launching an extensive study movement at schools and among the population and raising awareness about the capacity for self-study in the digital era. The week also targets enhancing the responsibility and participation of relevant parties in building a learning society. Representatives from educational institutions, community learning centers, centers of culture and sports around the province, and local students delivered speeches, expressing their determination to respond to the week. Provincial leaders and the Provincial Steering Committee for the Universalization of Education and the Eradication of Illiteracy and Building a Learning Society presented messages about the 223 Lifelong Learning Response Week to participants. The Farmers' Union of Dongsai City in Bifu Province has actively promoted scientific and technical transfer in recent times and introduced members to economic models that meet market needs. The union also deployed a farmer support fund to help farmers and create their conditions for households to invest in production and raise their incomes. Dong Soi City's Farmer Support Fund is now managing more than 7.2 billion Vietnam dong, of which the central government provided 450 million Vietnam dong, the province 2.8 billion Vietnam dong, and Dong Soi City 4 billion Vietnam dong. The capital is being used to support effective economic models, creating the conditions for members to overcome the difficulties posed by falling farming product prices and various epidemics. It is also being used to support the building of chains through cooperative groups and cooperatives, among others. The fund plays an important role in helping farmers diversify their production, increase the competitiveness of local agricultural products, and build large-scale raw material areas. Now moving on to the top stories around the country, the 8th plenum of the 13-party Central Committee opened in Hanoi on October the 2nd under the chair of General Secretary Nguyen Phu Chao. Participants at the plenum held a minute of silence for Party Central Committee member and Deputy Prime Minister Le Van Tham and victims who died in natural disasters and fires. 
During the plenum, the committee will discuss the national socio-economic and state budget situation in 2023 and plans for 2024, the state budget and financial plan for three years 2024 to 2026, and a roadmap for implementing the new salary regime. The committee will sum up the 10-year implementation of the resolution on a number of social policy issues for the 2012 to 2020 period, the 20-year implementation of the resolution on promoting the strength of the Great National Unity Bloc, the 10-year implementation of the resolution on national protection strategy in the new situation, and personnel planning for the Party Central Committee in the 14th tenure, and other important issues. At this plenum, participants will also consider and decide on big, complex, and sensitive issues, that are important to the completion of the political tasks, of the 13th Central Committee from now until the end of its term. The plenum is scheduled to last until October 8. Vietnam's trade surplus in September were estimated at some 2.3 billion US dollar, bringing the figure in the first nine months of the year to nearly 21.7 billion US dollar, according to the General Statistics Office. During the January September period, Vietnam exported some 260 billion US dollars worth of products, a year on year fall of 8.2%. Meanwhile, the country's imports totaled 238 billion US dollars, down 13.8% year on year. The US was the largest export market of Vietnam with nearly 71 billion US dollars, while China was the largest import market of the Southeast Asian country with over 79 billion US dollars. According to the Ministry of Industry and Trade, the drop in Vietnam's exports was attributed to slow recovery of the global economy, falling demand, and high interest rates in developed countries coupled with a tightened monetary policy and high levels of inventory. The ministry will continue to keep a close watch on the global economic situation, especially policy adjustments of large importers, so as to give timely warnings to enterprises, and propose the government to outline rational response policies. Additionally, it will focus on renewing and enhancing trade promotion activities targeting new markets, and potential ones, as well as support businesses to capitalize on free trade agreements preferences, to bolster exports. Ninh Thuận province has a coastline of over 100 km and boasts a diverse system of lagoons and bays. Taking advantage of its topography, local fishermen are investing in aquaculture with high economic value and doing so in a sustainable manner. In Ninh Hai District's Night Lagoon, which covers more than 1,200 hectares, local fishermen are developing a model for Pacific oyster farming. There are currently a total of 840 cages raising oysters in the lagoon. Mr. Nguyen Thang Duy's family has 15 oyster cages, each of 60 square meters. After deducting investment costs, each cage brings his family more than $1,200 in profit on average. Meanwhile, fisherman Nguyễn Bá Ngọc in Thanh Hải Common in Ninh Hà District chose to raise script. He invested in building two modern cages of 2,400 square meters each to raise adult squid for eggs and also commercial squid. The large cages are surrounded by a net while the bottom rests on the seabed so the squid can still find natural food resources, reducing the cost of feed. On average, a squid cage of 1,000 square meters produces about 7 tons per 5 to 6 month crop, bringing handsome profits to fishermen. Besides oysters and squid, local farmers also raise fish, lobsters, molasses and seaweed, and models are being replicated in other coastal districts of Ninh Thuận. With current selling prices, the types of seafood bring high profits for most farmers. To improve the efficiency of local aquaculture, researchers in the district are working to produce sufficient young fish of high quality. District authorities are also closely directing and inspecting farming models to ensure fishermen's compliance with local development plans and to protect the diversity and sustainability of local ecosystems. And that's what 10 minutes of BBTV News. To watch this news again, you can download our mobile app BBTV Go or visit our website and YouTube channel. Now, thanks for staying with us and see you next time.